If I could describe to get my life tour in one word, it would be vulnerability. Showing up for yourself is so important. Welcome to the Get My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanca. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the Get My Life Tour. It is me, your host, Lydia T. Blanco. And as always, I am so excited because you decided to show up for yourself and take center stage in your life. Like, shout out to you. It has been an incredible journey thus far here on the Get My Life Tour. And today, I'm hype. I'm going to try to sit in my seat and not act too familiar, but it's the Get My Life Tour, so I do what I want, clearly. (laughs) But I'm so hyped because I have my sister, someone who is like a spiritual big sister, a mentor of mine, and just so many great things. I'm sure you know who she is. And she is Miss Diddy the Extraordinaire, (laughs) entrepreneur, CEO, (laughs) lifestyle enthusiast. Is yes. brand guru. I mean, just so much. The list goes Boy, on yes. and on. Okay. <laughs> but help me in welcoming her to center stage, Miss Diddy. How are you living? Well, honey, I'm feeling good after that intro. Okay, get me together. <laughs> get my life together. That's Look, it. I'm only picking up what you're putting down. That like, <laughs> I, I'm not making any of this up. Like, I don't yeah. need to make you sound bigger than what you are. You are larger than life. Yeah. And I'm so, I'm always excited about you. Well, thank you. And I'm always excited about you. I'm so proud of you. You know, I tap in with you. I always want to make sure you're vibrating at your highest frequency. So yes. I'm excited to join you here. Um, on your stage and um, I'm just I'm here I'm happy to be able to be here to support you as well that's I'm honored I appreciate you so much you know I have like swiftly gone through you know your bio you have an official bio I don't even want to read it because everybody knows how dope you are but let's just do this in your own words tell us who Miss Diddy is Ooh, I don't even know how to explain that in my own words um you know, I'm just uh, a young black woman uh, working really hard towards some great things. I don't always know what those things are, um, but you know, I just follow follow God's dream and where He'd have me go, and I end up in some pretty cool places <laughs> as a result of it. But um, I uh, own a marketing firm called The Brand Group, built it from the ground up, and it is the home of um, some really incredible clients, events, uh, partnerships, and um, it's become a really great global brand at this point. We have great partnerships all around the world and with a lot of great people and um, kind of the the dot connector um, between a lot of uh, great things in entertainment space, but as well as, you know, all things entertainment. So sports, uh, music, television, film, but also political and so on and so forth. I love it. You're always working towards great things, even when you don't know where they are. Yes. Where does that attitude come from? Right? Because everybody doesn't wake up or work with that kind of mindset. Um, You know, you have to make a decision as to what you want to be. Not so much what you want to do, but... You know, do you want to be great? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be, you know, at the highest of your game? Do you want to, you know, be excellent? That those are decisions that you have to make prior to stepping into it. And so those are decisions I made early on. And so it takes a lot to 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 get those things accomplished. But that's always the goal at hand is to be number one and be excellent and be, you know, at the highest um peak possible and um it's a tall order, but I, I seem to slam dunk it all the time. And come on, <laughs> yes, <laughs> slam dunk out here. But uh, yo, no, it, oh my god, yeah, I love that slam dunking at like what five three five four Round, five that? three and a half. You know, you know my real height. <laughs> <laughs> next to each other. <laughs> Claim it, yes. <laughs> I I love that. Like, you are truly an excellentist. I would never forget. 
the day we spent together yes. here in Manhattan. Yes. And you were so serious about being prompt. You know, as someone in the media industry, always, you know, catching up with this person or that person, you were the first person who I've ever been with who was like, you know what? It is important wow. for me to be on time. Okay. They've said it, but your actual action. Yeah. You like you are truly an excellentist. Like you don't waste anyone's time. No. The standards you set for yourself, you set for others and you call other people higher. Yeah. Have you always worked like that, Diddy? Like um, has this always been your thing? Yeah, you know, I I I seem to take time seriously early on as well. You know, and I respect people's time and I and I want people to respect mine. Um mm -hmm. you know, I respect people's time whether the meeting is about myself or not. It could be all about Miss Diddy. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to be on time and early. If that was my commitment and that's what I said I'm going to do, it's important that that is, um, you know, followed through to the to the teeth. And time is something that you can't get back. You know what I mean? And someone doesn't respect and honor your time. It's like, that's almost to me, like for my POV is like one of the worst things possible. Right. And it also says a lot of just about where you are as an adult and as an individual, you know what I mean? Do you take yourself mm -hmm. serious? Like I take myself seriously. So I make sure I'm prepared and, and, and on time for commitments. I think it's one of the most important things in business. Right. I remember going from, oh my goodness, Apple yes. to complex. <laughs> yes. I was like, was we great. went to Hearst. Yes. I was just like, and we bounced between towers at Hearst from L to the actual tower. We was going up and down, <laughs> back and forth. And you know what I will never forget mm -hmm. was the moment we spent in that diner. I don't know where we were. We at were. the hotel, I think. Yeah, we were at the hotel, but we also went to this diner. Did he do you remember the diner? Yeah, it was yeah. me, you, Brianna, and we were literally like we tucked ourselves into this yes. diner. You wanted some soup yes. or some kind of vegan option, and they didn't have it. And you were like, you know what? We have to leave because we have to be on time yes. and this. And I was like, she <laughs> is serious. We got on the elevator. Everybody was calling yes. you. I think Lauren London called yes. you at that time. Yes. And you was like, I got to go. You hung up. She called you right back. Mm -hmm. I was like, she is about her business, uh -huh. right? It's one thing to pride yourself as an entrepreneur, sure. businesswoman, but you have to operate at a high level. Yeah. And those are, Do you, those are, I think the moments, those are, well, no, nah, I think those are the moments that people don't see, right? So then right. they look at me and like, oh, how are you? You know, or Miss Diddy always got this going on. Da, da, da. Well, those are the quiet moments that I'm not, don't have to showcase that are happening. You know what I mean? Because you went with me mm -hmm. on a full media day with the client, you know, and it's important that that the people that I'm in business with all the way around understand that I respect time, that I'm professional, that I'm serious about my business. And like, this is not just looking cute on Instagram. Like that's actually easy. You know what I like, Right. Cause you're bad. Yeah, period. Come on, you're stupid. No, I'm just saying like the, <laughs> the cute thing is that's what these girls do. Right. So it's like, it's just about look, it's cute and it's take a picture and it's like, but the work may have not been done. And that, and, mm. and, you know, you will know, a, you will know a tree by the fruit it bears. You will. It's just what, just what it is, you know? So, yeah, I think those are the moments that people don't see that, that are um, near and dear to my heart because it's my, my proof to God. It's not like, this is pretty mm. odd to see when I'm, I'm doing this and like, nah, man, like, as long as God knows that I'm serious about what I'm doing and my clients and the people I'm in business with feel that energy and that passion then I'll forever be successful is the way I look at it. I I really appreciate that. Yeah. We live in this moment where so many people are presumed lifestyle authorities sure. and this and that sure. and any three letters they can put sure. together in front of their name, right? <laughs> to make themselves seem important. And I'm just like, it's number one, it's exhausting, but I, yes. I do my best to not pay attention to that because that's not my calling, yeah. right? But you you talk about work ethic. You have it, right? Mm -hmm. Not only do I want to know where that work ethic came from, I want you to talk about worth ethic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because so many people are just out here. I mean, 
just faking the funk. It is really sickening, right? Yeah. But you actually have a worse ethic. You know who you are as a black woman, as a sure. woman of faith, and so many other things. Can you can you touch on that a bit? Sure. Um, a worth ethic. So it's really important to know who to to do your best to know who you are, to explore who you are, right? To find your purpose because therein lies the unlock of the book of everything else <laughs> you know like the book mm-hmm. of life and everything i was watching um uh lena lena wade great friend of mine she was actually on a live with like hb this hbcu i believe something like that it was something i clicked on she was on and she was just oh my gosh she was just spitting so many Jewels, and, and there was something that she said that I that I always resonated with in my life, but she put it into words. And she said something to the effect that basically, um, like this life, right? It's 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 a ever evolving. So it's a journey. It's not like the idea of that you arrive somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. You're always changing. You're always learning. If if you are, if you're cognizant and aware, and you understand the importance of that, and so with that comes the growth, right? Like. People are afraid to grow. They are afraid to be uncomfortable. Right. They are afraid. There's no way you can go to the next level without living some in that uncomfortability space or living in a sacrificial space. Or that's how you grow. Like how you don't get to the next grade without passing the first that mm, grade. You, know, you don't good. get to the fourth grade without <laughs> passing third grade. No, if you don't pass it, they hold you back until you pass it. You know what I mean? Those are the rules. Right. Those are the rules of engagement. Those are the rules of life. And other the same things um, in understanding your worth, your work, all of those things. There's no way that, you know, God would open doors for me that I'm not yet ready for. I had to do a lot mm-hmm. of work to get to those doors. A lot of um, even when it comes to your own internal soul searching, you know, like, why right. would I place you in this big space? And I know it's going to drown you. That's that's not that's not godly. That's not how he works. So when people are right. searching for this next moment and they're so obsessed with the wrong thing, you know what I mean? Like that, th- that's what happens instead of being obsessed. Like, all right, God, what are you teaching me in this? What am I, to, mm. what am I to learn in this? What, what is this moment right for me so that I can get to the next level so I can be ready and prepared, you know? And Right. I don't know. I I spent a lot of people. Of course, I work outside and with a lot of people, and it's a lot a large part of my life. But a large part of my life is spending alone, and it, and I have it that way on purpose. You know what I mean? Like I need time to clear the noise out because life is noisy once you walk outside, right? And right. um, I need time to hear God clearly because if I don't, I can be making all the wrong moves in the right season. And that's dangerous. Mm. Oh my. Yeah. You know, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I think a lot of people see you in the limelight Mm -hmm. and they wonder how you Mm -hmm. do it all. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my goodness, she knows Mm -hmm. this person, that person, or she's everywhere. She's making things happen. Like, Mm millions flow through your hands, yeah. right? And you're connected to, you know, people in high places. But the fact that you're saying you have to be intentional about spending quiet time with yourself in order to be alignment is so key. Yeah. I don't think that we associate that kind of lifestyle with someone who is, you know, a lifestyle authority. Yeah, sure, <laughs> like, sure. That balance. Yeah. I mean, it's so it was, important. It's always important for me to be a person. You know, this, the yeah. life I live, is is a 10% of the world type of thing. It's not a, it's not normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? The things that I do, the things I'm a part of, the tables and rooms I, I sit in and, you know, the people that I deal with on a day-to-day basis, it's not, it's not a normal thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, right. you're like, I think, you know, like Lauren called you when we were walking, you know, those are real, those, that's my real life, my whole life, you know? Right. And so it was always important for me to, um, be, be clear about who I am as a person, you know, and never lose mm. sight of the idea that this is for the generations to come. You know, I'm writing, you know, our black history book. I'm, 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 I'm writing what that looks like. You know, that's important. Right. You know? Oh, Diddy, this is why. <laughs> 
I love you and I adore you because you are such a real one, right? Because you you live this very glamorous lifestyle yeah. that is yours. It belongs to you. God said yes. Like this is what you have been working t- right. for and towards, right? And so much more has come. I could only yeah, imagine, sure. right? But you're also in these streets, like heavy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like this is what I always want people to know more about. So let's have a conversation, mm-hmm. um, and then we'll get into your get my life moment because people you know, pay attention to what they want to pay sure. attention to. And I don't know what your impressions are like. I know you have this, you know, massive <laughs> following, but not only do you show up for your clients yeah. and in your industry, right. But you also show up for, yeah, for sure. in a very real way with the mayor, yeah. with so many other leaders within the community, yeah. you know, take, take us back to, uh, Miss D- well, Young <laughs> Diddy, right. Um, <laughs> Um, in Compton, in Compton, um, and her passion to want to give back so badly. Um, you know, I had, a, I had, a, I had a pretty good um, upbringing in terms, you know, like just uh, I had a pretty good upbringing. You know, Compton is a is a is a great city. You know, it's it's a it's a city of resilience. You know, everywhere you go in the world, you'll have hoods and and you know and and marginalized people and things of that nature and underserved communities. Right. So it's technically an underserved right. community, but a city of great people because the idea is like, there can't be just one Miss Diddy in Compton. I mean, if I came out here, it has to be so many more, you know, and, right. and same thing with, your, you know, like your Kendrick Lamar's your Anthony Anderson, your Serena and Vena, Venus Williams, like the, your Dr. Dre's, these are YG. These are all people from Compton. And so the, the idea that the mayor and I, we, we have a, have a, uh, um, we have, we both view that as such, right? So like, Hey, if there's the, the mayor came out of Compton, if that, if these wonderful people who excel in life came from this great city, there has to be more. So we need to figure out who they mm-hmm. are. Right. And we need to provide yeah. them with the resources and, and the mo- motivation and inspiration to do more. Um, my my feel of giving back to the community, to my community in particular, really came a lot from the mayor as well. She gave avenues for us to do so. Um, the people that were mayors that were in position prior, they didn't open those type of doors. They weren't forward thinkers. They weren't millennial based um, thinkers. And so... Um, they weren't action minded. And so um, Mayor Asia Brown is, and she always has been since she's been in office. And so that's allowed us to do a lot. Um, the city, a mm-hmm. lot of unorthodox things, innovative things, um, and also provided resources for us to kind of all come together. I have a, one of my brothers, we grew up together. His name is Watts Sticks. He's from Watts. And things that he's doing in the community of Watts is unreal i've never seen it happen in watts before i'm not saying there's not some ogs that's done things from the, you know for the kids and stuff but what right. he's providing he's, you know bringing um you know fresh produce and you know he's he, his whole his family is vegan him and his wife fee and their children and so he's bringing fresh produce you know to, to our communities which is something no one's done i've seen that happen. Like, real fresh produce like like providing it for thousands of families, you know, on a constant um, basis and, and providing uh, health fairs and stuff like that. And, you know, same thing with my pastor, Michael Fisher over at Greater Zion and Compton. And so it's the idea of us leaders really understanding that we have to make sure that part is taken care of. I've always been the person that take care of things in my family or whatever I need to do with that. So I had a heart like that. Um, then mm-hmm. being able to have a mayor that we have in office and the avenue and resources to do it, you know, has just been really a blessing. So we're just praying that, you know, the more of us, you know, come out of there or not even they can stay there, just make it a better place where everybody can live there. Right. You know, but, you know we have great, even from Compton and from Los Angeles, I just got off a call right before I got on with you with Baron Davis. And um, he has a whole Black Santa initiative, which is huge. Beautiful, right. and he's been doing it for years in the community. And we're going to do something called Given Has No Season, so we want to do some content based around that. And just, yeah, so you dope. know, and so 
it's important that we showcase that because I'm not trying to be like my 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 what I have to do is for the people. That's my purpose. You know, everybody mm-hmm. has their own purpose. Some people just want to be famous. Some people want to wrap their they likes away. You know, whatever. Some people want to be an Instagram model. <laughs> I don't know, girl. In- influencer. You know, girl. God bless them all. Look. <laughs> right. You here to do this, <laughs> what and you, you bring everyone into yeah. the fold. I don't know what sideline conversations you have with your celebrity mm-hmm. friends, but it se- it seems like you got this like mafia <laughs> contract. You're like, no, I'm gonna put you on. What you're gonna do is come back and give back, right? And I'm like, I'm not yeah. sure if those are the conversations you're having with them, but it seems I'm that way. Because I'm like, for sure, <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? For game sure. recognized game. I'm just yeah. like everyone who you associate yourself with from my mm-hmm. vantage point, right? They, they are in alignment with your, the sure, way you give sure. back, yeah. right? You don't just do things no. for clout, which is to be yeah. appreciated. Well, you know, it's also, it's common, common denominator. It's, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my thirties. I'm not a kid. I'm not looking for friends. I'm not like, I, I know what I'm doing, you know? So the people that I'm aligned mm-hmm. with or choose to deal with in my world, we have to have some commonalities, Otherwise, it makes no sense for us to be um, in partnership or relation with each other at all. So those commonalities have mm. to include things that are really near and dear to my heart, which would be community, which would be family. You know what I mean? Like, otherwise, I mean, right. like we don't have her. I don't have her. I don't need anyone to be my friend. I'm, I'm please. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, you know, I've been popular my whole life. That's like who the other people like. Okay. Like, girl, please. So. Just in case you were wondering, okay? (laughs) I love it. You know, I want to talk a little bit, and I keep saying it before we get into the Get My Life moment, right? But I want to talk about how you protect your Mm. peace. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been fortunate to hear you talk Mm -hmm. about this a bit in intimate Mm -hmm. conversation. But if you don't mind sharing, you don't have to share your whole morning Mm -hmm. ritual. But can you talk about how you protect your peace and how others can do the same? You know what? I'm just now learning it, if I to be honest. I'm just not learning mm. because what happens is when you're from, you know, you're from the hood and you grow up and you have, you know, I had great friends, all that kind of stuff. And, but, you know, we didn't grow up silver, you know, silver spoon fed and our uncles had trust right. funds and our daddies was putting us on and gave us a million dollars to start our company and all that. And that's not how we, that, that wasn't our story. So you get to a certain place and you, you are, um, in a, in a, in a great space, whether it be financially, whether it be resourceful, whatever the case may be, you, you then feel that it's your duty to help everybody. Right. And that's mm-hmm. not the truth. And that's actually really, um, abusive to yourself. So you, you start to, yeah. you start to, you start an abusive relationship with yourself and you don't look at it as such. And so I start, I've, in recent years and more so really this year, especially with the pandemic have learned to say, hold on, let me take care of me first. And that seems cliche, but it's not because I didn't do that before. Of course I was fine. And, but I always felt like I'm fine. I'm, I'll figure that out. I'm fine. I'll figure that out. As long as everybody else is situated. Mm -hmm. Oh, what you need a thousand dollars. All right, let me, I'll figure I'll find a thousand dollars somewhere else. Let me get that to them. They make sure they are, you know, and that it's just, it's abusive because I was putting Yes, it is. After everybody, constantly, for years, because I felt, Mm -hmm. all right, I'm in this position and I want to make sure I know what it's like to not be in this position. I Well, I know what it's like like to be in transition and be trying to figure it out financially and be trying to figure it out career-wise and not have, um, you know, all the money or the resources or whatever. I always have the resources, but stuff like that. And I had to learn to say, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Me take care of me. <laughs> me, and that became the most important. No matter what, and that that that's why I say it's a lot of time I spend alone. Um, you know, because it's mm-hmm. making sure that I'm reminding myself that that's the most important thing. You know, and of course, prayer. I'm a spiritual woman. Of course, I'm a godly woman, and that's the most important thing. But prayer, but really worship. You know, putting some good gospel mm-hmm. music on and really allowing it to get in your soul and, and worshiping because that's something separate from praying. That's not asking God for anything. Worshiping is giving right. God something, you know. I really appreciate yes. you sharing that. You 
because so many of us think that we have mastered uh-huh. self-care uh-huh. or prioritizing uh-huh. ourselves. And then we have those moments, right, where the, the unraveling, unraveling happens. And we're trying to figure it out. What is going on? Am I losing mm-hmm. my mind? Like, do I need to go talk to somebody? Yeah, Most likely, sure, yes. sure. Right? But we we wait so mm-hmm. long to get there in life, especially Absolutely. Black women. We got this, I can yeah. do it or I got it. You know, syndrome, and most yeah. times we do not. No, nobody. Told we just us have everything okay else on us. So we have to yeah, unlearn what we real. learned and learn something what was right, which was it's okay if you don't have it all figured out, and if you need to talk to somebody to help you through this and to give you the tools. That you know. is that's so real. You're giving back. I love that that Baron Dead oh, campaign. So Giving has no season. That is so dope. You know, I know no, he's a part of that. He's so like, come on, this smart is... dude. Like, oh my gosh, BD is like. That's the thing about about why he's been able to excel beyond the court. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was always smart. Mm. You know, he became his own agent. Like, he was always smart. All he was, he was <laughs> made great investments, and he's always creative. And you know. He's, his visions have been really off community based as well. It's not easy to have that mantle and to take that on in such a tall order because you're also doing things for broken people that may not appreciate it because they don't know how. You know what, Diddy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what you. <laughs> Wait a second now. Okay. <laughs> Look, that is clearly <laughs> the word. Let, let's talk about how you've been able to, to really navigate Ooh, that. Girl. I can only imagine Maybe. how many people, Ooh. you know, Ooh. broken, Ooh. think they got it all together, Ooh. think they don't need you, but Ooh. then come around, right? I had this conversation and I was like, you know what? I'm going to title this conversation, Mask, Shut Your Ass Up. Shut Your Ass Up. That's it. You know, because there's always someone. I could only imagine. At times, I'm just like, please stop asking me for stuff. But I can only imagine the amount of people who have their hands out, their buckets out, their trunks popped, like, just Just waiting waiting to collect. How do you manage Um, that? You know, it's getting to that point. It's when I got to that point where I started to kind of look around and be like, hmm. No one's going to be able to save me if I needed it. Mm. And so this is foolish. <laughs> you know, and it's also after hmm. being, you know, wrongly done by people you've done so much for multiple, multiple times, um, you start mm. to, to learn a little. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because right. you could have had the best intentions, but that doesn't mean that's what they're, they're, they're we're good. And you got to, cipher through that and you have to have stronger discernment early on and so um Mm. you know that's what it is and it's also I just I pray mercy on people too like you know you have to be careful how you do people because you don't know how precious people are to God and his vision for people right like you know you gotta be careful you really gotta be careful and people are very um self-serving and unhealthy and people want to like go to work out and do all this but health has to do with your mind your soul your spirit you know and and so many people are unhealthy dealing in unhealthy relationships being unhealthy in general to people and it just sucks like it sucks being this far along the way I am as well. It sucks because a lot of not most people aren't. Mm. You know, it's so real. Every time I hear everyone can't go with you in so many different ways. Like that's oh, yeah, what you I just count heard. that out. Everybody you can't go out. with you. It's the most hard thing ever. You, you know that one on out. Most won't go with you. Not even everyone can't go with you. Most won't go. Most mm. because it's 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 the idea of like going up in an airplane. The higher you get in the altitude, the harder it is to breathe. Not everyone can breathe at mm. you know certain levels, let alone run or excel. 
You just keep doing this thing where you're picking up the microphone and you're slapping <laughs> the stand down. <laughs> just like, yo, is this thing on? Like, did she bring the lavalier? Because clearly the mic is done. <laughs> like, what is happening right now? Yo, if this is not Ooh, God, I don't know what is. It gets like, deep. Gotta learn to navigate heartbreak. Because that heartbreak, it'll, heart, it'll mm. break your heart. You gotta learn to make tough decisions when it don't feel good. It's tough. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, give the people what they want, Diddy. <laughs> This is so good, but I'm literally over here taking in what you are saying. I've been having these conversations yeah. with myself, yes. with the most high, and then they, mm-hmm. it keeps coming up, mm-hmm. right? And I think it's that mm-hmm. transformation so many mm-hmm. of us are in. You know, I was um, sharing, I actually shared a quote mm-hmm. yesterday. It was one of my favorite Zora Neale Hurston quotes, and there's, there are years that ask and there are Ooh, years that answer. That's deep. That's, a that's deep, right, deep right? And I'm just thinking about like all the moments we have when we just want to know why we need someone to over explain, mm. right? But it's literally that space where God is mm. like, come to mm. me about it. Or mm. don't even worry about that right now. Mm-hmm. That's none of your business. Mm-hmm. Keep it moving. Right. But that often feels like heartbreak. Yeah. And navigating that is yeah, tough. It is. It's tough. And you just you have to know that good decisions don't always feel good. So it's not about the making mm. you feel good. That's not growth. Like it's not how you grow mm. feeling good. It's just not. It's just one of those things like this life is sacrificial. And it's ever evolving, it's ever mm-hmm. teaching. And there's great moments, there's good moments, there's terrible moments, heartbreaking moments. Um, and it's all over again. You know, it's a big cycle. You know? Right. You know, before I let you go, I wish <laughs> I never had to uh, let you go. I'm so glad no, that right. I don't in real life, right? But you you have this master class, The Secrets yes. of Successful Entrepreneurs, and it, I joined, I was like, oh, this is where yes. it's at, right? Uh, so yes. that was my plug, right? But there are so many people who follow your journey. They want yeah. the behind the scenes. They would love the opportunity yeah. to learn from you, right? What would you say some of the secrets, um, even though it's not going to be a secret since you're giving it out right now, right? But what have been some of those secrets for you that other people can kind of, you know, take with them along their journey, uh-huh. whether they're just getting started or they're, you know, emerging um, or def- established. I mean, definitely what we discussed earlier is one of them is being on time. Seems so minuscule, but it's actually one of the biggest things that that you have that you should do. You know, um, people remember that, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a young black woman doing business at a very high level. You know, if I'm late, that's t- that's another latch on me you know what i'm saying it's like you're young you're black you're right good looking you're walking in you're fly that actually works against me and a lot mm-hmm. of things like you know what i mean it's like right you know i'm not a white <laughs> girl with blonde hair and you know with an mba from such and such like no you know what i mean i'm, I'm a right. girl with with from, that built it all so time um also um uh, um doing good business Right. People want love. They want money so bad. And it's like, you know, that one little that one little check that you thought was blah, blah, blah is going to be the demise of it all. You know, I've been in this business 15 years. There's no way I'd be able to have such a clean brand without doing good business with people. You know, be transparent. Mm. I can do that or I can't do that. This is what I'm able to do. This is what I'm not able to do. Don't overpromise things. You know what I mean. Be honest with people. Be honest with people and work and work hard. Like, don't don't leave it all on the table because you want to be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are definitely some right. of the secrets. And it seems like people know that, but clearly they don't because they'd be further along. You know, I don't think a lot of people sure. know that in their hearts, right? And not everybody is doing things with a worth ethic, a love ethic, 
or intentionally and most definitely not honest honestly like integrity mm-hmm. is so it's big it's and some some people wouldn't know if it slapped them in the face i'm like wow you yeah. really have no integrity right um but i think that's part of the reason why a lot of people will never um get to where their heart mm-hmm. desires right because they just aren't who they mm-hmm. they would like to mm-hmm. be right or who they say they are better yet you know what would you tell young miss diddy 15 years ago right uh, uh good music miss diddy miss diddy you know who was out yeah. here doing street promo what would you tell her knowing you everything know that you Honestly, know now I, i'm not going front i was like a one-of-a-kind type of girl like i'm not lying um I would definitely tell me to stay on the same, same track. And also, you know, one thing that I didn't do and never did, and this is not judgment to anyone, but I didn't just go sleep with anybody because that it was presented to me. Right. So there's, there's, there's that space that you have to be careful as a woman. There's double standards everywhere. It's just a part of it. Don't try to rock the boat, just become a boss. And then you could do what you want. You know what I'm saying? It's like, other than that, prior to that, you can't. Mm-hmm. it's just what it is. And so, you know, but what I would tell um, young Diddy is is to guard yourself, you know, uh, don't be so, I came up in an era with some dope guys and some dope people like John Monopoly and Kenny Burns and Don C and all these guys that I saw give opportunity to so many people, connected people with so many people. And that was, I was a part of the culture of like, oh no, let me just connect you with so-and-so. I was like, oh, Lydia, okay, Dorian's going to New York. Let me make sure that you connect with Dorian get that blah 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 and that in this generation is not always fair to you because people just want to use that and you you know what I mean so I would I would tell myself to start business earlier business be about your money earlier you Mm. know um I was always people didn't play with me so much about that but I was also very um people were friends and we were to you know what I mean like and and you got it it's a thin line when you when you are friendly with people. You have to be careful. That friendly component. Oh. I would probably tell myself yep. to not really be as friendly too. You know what? I'm so glad you said that. Because a lot of us think that we are connected to people 100%. differently than we are. And it's one hell of a feeling when you feel like you literally got a wind punch out of you because you re- you were it was made clear to you that you were some you were not somebody's friend. Made clear, you know. Clear as that, yeah. Made very clear. I've seen those moments happen, and I'm just like, oh my gosh! I thank God it has not happened to me because I understand that I'm not everyone's friend just because we've done business, we've had a conversation. You think I'm dope, vice versa, right? But I'm so glad that you are saying that because there's someone yeah. tuned in who right. needed to sure. hear that as they do business, right? No matter what part um, mm-hmm. of your journey you are on, it is so key to have that information. Sure. I wish more sure. people heard yeah. that sure. earlier. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good. That is so good. Look, <laughs> uh, I know you have a million things to do, and I'm so grateful for the yes. time that you have like carved out. So we are going to drop this mic. You, like I said, have already come <laughs> clearly with a lavalier and have beat my microphone up. <laughs> but it is time for you to drop the mic. Leave us with something, you know, have your moment. But when you are ready, the stage is yours. It's definitely it's definitely sexual chocolate. You gotta drop the mic from coming to America. But um, I mean, I don't, hey. I don't, I don't know, man. Just, <laughs> I just I think that everyone should just go for what you want to do. at This point, right? There's no real rules in this thing. The world is turned upside down, and you know, I understand that God's kingdom is king is king. If you're part of that, you're safe. That's really where it's at. Mm-hmm. That's real. You know, as you continue to do your work, as you continue to build community and really follow your dreams, let people know how they can yeah, stay connected I'm with you and the work that you're doing. Huge, huge part of all of our works at this point. So my Instagram is Miss Diddy. That's at M I S S D I D D Y, Miss Diddy. Um, my company is The Brand Group LA on social media at The Brand Group LA. 
Um, same, I mean, yeah, across social, that's pretty much where you find me. <laughs> Perfect. And as always, to stay connected with the Get My Life Tour, be sure to visit the Get My Life Tour.com. Register for the newsletter. Right. Merchandise will be dropping soon. We are at the Get My Life Tour on all social platforms, with the exception of Twitter, because it was a little bit too long. So it's at Get My Life Tour. I am so grateful for the way that you showed up, Diddy. You. you are one of a kind. Thank you. And you are more than welcome. I am confident that you have received what it is that was meant for you here mm-hmm. on this stop of the Get My Life Tour. Continue to do what you have been called to do and show up fearlessly. Until the next time, I will see you right here at Center Stage on the Get My Life Tour. Peace. It has been real. Peace. Mm-hmm.